Miringotomy and grommet insertion. Miringotomy is also called tympanotomy or tympanostomy or tympanocentesis. The instrument that we use for incision is a bayonet shaped or an angle shaped lancet. The most common indication is acute suppurative otitis media when there is pus located behind the drum in the middle ear. This pus has to be evacuated, eliminated from the middle ear in order to have a good healing. The other indication for uh, miringotomy is when we insert a grommet or ventilation tube into the tympanic membrane. This is in case of serous otitis media when there is serous fluid behind the drum and it's a chronic inflammatory process. In some cases we insert grommet in case of Meniere's disease when the patient has vertigo, tinnitus and sensor neural hearing loss or in cases of uh, patulous or constantly open eustachian tubes and sometimes we need to use hyperbaric chamber treatment for patient and in these cases grommet should be inserted. Grommet can be inserted without anesthesia but most often we use local anesthetics or we do the procedure in general anesthesia. We can use local anesthetics such as pantocaine or different types of lidocaine, either in forms of a spray or a gel or a cream. The best way to do grommet is probably in general anesthetics, as this is no pain for the patient and the patient uh, can be well treated uh, and the head should be uh, positioned well in order to do the uh, insertion properly, we use a microscope uh, to have a magnified vision as we need to insert a grommet to a certain place of the tympanic membrane uh, and we should certainly not put the grommet into an area which might be dangerous as in behind the posterior superior quadrant of the drum lies few vital structures that we should not uh, Endure, such as facial nerve or uh, the round or oval windows. On the picture, you can see a superative otitis media when there is pus behind the drum, and we need to evacuate that pus. Thus, we need to do a miringotomy on the borders of the anterior quadrants of the tympanic membrane. A small cut incision is performed, and as you can see immediately the pus came out from the drum we can do swabs to have bacterial culture and to check for antibiotic sensitivity the grommet insertion is done similarly we do a cut on the anterior quadrant of the drum and in this cut hole we uh, insert the grommet to keep the hole open for a longer period of time to have and create a good ventilation for the middle ear. In this case, you can see that after cutting the drum, uh, the effusion or the glue is trying to be sucked out from the middle ear, but this is too thick uh, to just suck it out. Thus, we have to do another opening to let the air enter the middle ear and at the same time suck the glue or the fusion out from the middle ear. After doing this, we can insert a grommet and based on the type of grommet, it can be uh, temporarily in the middle ear or we have type of grommets that would not fall out by themselves and they are called permovents and they are located in the middle ear or in the tympanic membrane for a longer time. On the picture you can see the different types of grommets and the instruments that we use for miringotomy and grommet insertion. Thank you for your attention.